Hey everyone, so I spent the last couple days learning this JavaScript library called underscore JS. And in this video, I'm just gonna show you some of the things I learned and some examples of what it can do. Underscore JS, so I had actually never even heard of underscore before learning it, but I really like what I learned the past few days and I think I'm gonna start using this in my own projects. So let's start with what underscore even is. Underscore JS is a lightweight open source JavaScript library that gives you over a hundred different functions that you can use in common scenarios to make your life easier as a programmer. The library actually doesn't extend any core JavaScript objects. People use it as a utility belt so that they can work smarter and faster when working on projects. Let me ask you some questions if you're wondering why you would even start to use underscore. The first question comes directly from the underscore JS website. And it says, if I sit down in front of a blank HTML page and want to start being productive immediately, what do I need? Uh, some other questions I came up with after learning about underscore are one, do you have trouble remembering all the ways you can manipulate objects? And two, do you find yourself constantly going to Stack Overflow to remember how to write functions that you commonly use? I believe that underscore definitely helps with both of these issues, and we'll dive into some examples later to show you how. Uh, all of the important features underscore gives us can actually be divided into six different categories. Collections, arrays, functions, objects, utilities, and chaining. Even though we don't have time to go through every single function underscore gives us, we're going to try to learn at least one useful function from each category today. Setting up underscore is actually very simple. You can either just add a script tag in your HTML file with the CDN URL located there, or you can, if you already have Node installed, you can run npm install underscore. Uh, let's walk through some example functions of underscore to better understand why it's useful to programmers. Okay, everyone, before I go into any examples of specific functions, underscore js gives us i just want to show you this is their main website you just gotta go to underscore js.org and so if you're working with underscore js you can go to any one of their functions to learn more about it um, the parameters it takes what it returns things like that so obviously like i said before all the functions are broken up into six categories so you have collection functions which can be either arrays or objects you have array functions, you have function functions, um, also object functions, utility functions, and lastly chaining functions, which there's only two here. But So if you're working with underscore JS and you just need a little more information about syntax or what kind of parameters each function takes, you can just come here and learn more about it. Okay, so for our first example, we're gonna use one of the collection functions and it's actually called filter. Um, so I already installed underscore through node and just make sure you have this line of code if you're going to be using underscore. All underscore functions start with an underscore, believe it or not. Um, and then whenever you wanna access a function, you're just gonna do dot and then I mean, you can find it through here, just type it, but we're gonna use the filter one. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you what we're going to do using vanilla JavaScript first. So what we wanna do is we're gonna have a array of numbers and what we wanna do is have an output array of only the even numbers of that first list. So let's just go through that. So we'll have an array of numbers uh, these can be any numbers, it doesn't matter. Okay, so for this list, our um, even numbers would be 34, 24, 86, and 40. So how would I would, I mean, there's multiple ways, but how I would do this is I would have an initialize output array and then have a for loop. And then for each uh, 
value goes through in the for loop, we're going to check if that particular number is even. And if it is, I'm just going to push it onto that output array. Okay, so this is something everyone probably knows how to do. And let's just console log to see if we got the right result. Okay, and we're just gonna look at our debug console to see. Okay, so 34, 24, 86, 40, that's correct. So now using underscore, I like it a lot because you don't have to write as much code, but I'll just show you how it works. So we'll use the same numbers as before. Our list of numbers. I mean, we can use the same array because it hasn't changed since before. So, using underscore, everything's going to be put into this output array. So we use the underscore dot whatever function we want to do filter. That's our function. So for the filter function, we first our first argument is the original array. And our second argument is a function of what we want to do with each item in that array. And whatever we return in this next function is just going to be pushed onto this output. And the filter function does that automatically for us. So we'll just, we pass in whatever number we have. Um, and we're just going to return if it's even. Okay, so this should give us the same result as doing it this way. So let's just console log. Um, I'll just name this output two. Console log output two. And we should get the same result. And there we go. So, so this is using um, the underscore JS filter function. Um, and this is just one of the collection functions. So you can use objects or arrays on this. But yeah, let's go on to another example. Okay, so looking online about what people say about underscore JS, uh, most people actually use it for the collection helpers. So we're gonna do one more collection helper example. And this one, I'm not gonna show you the vanilla JavaScript way to do it. I'm just gonna show you how underscore works. Um, so for this one, we'll also have another array of numbers again. And I'll just make it simple for this example. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so the one I want to show you is called reduce. And so we gotta have an underscore. The reduce function takes in the collection, so our numbers, and then just like the other function, we also pass in a function of what we want to do for each value. Um, and for this reduce function, we have the total. So let me just tell you what we're going to do. We're going to add up the sum of these, um, but also output the sequential sum as well. So we'll have a total. We'll have the current value, so whatever value it's on right now, um, the index of that value, and we'll also pass in the original array as well. So this is the arguments. Um, the function takes for this reduce function. And so first, just so we can see um, the total increment, I want to console log the total before we do anything for each item in the numbers list. But we're also going to return for each one, we're going to return the total plus whatever the current value is. So pretty simple. We're not, obviously we're not using all of our parameters, but we could if we wanted to. So let me just show you what that does first, and then we're going to change it up a little. So it gives us 1, 3, 6, and then 10. So console.log total, it starts at 1, and then the next time around, so after that it adds 2 to 1. So the next time it outputs, it's going to be 3. Then it adds three, so it's going to be six, and then it adds four, so it's going to be ten. 
and we didn't console.log after the last one was added. So if we do that, it'll be 15. So we just have console log the sum after that's all done. So let's see that. There we go. So we have 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. So you might be wondering, why does it output 1 to start? So actually, with the reduce function, the very first value, it already starts on the first value, and the very first value is already tied to the total. So the second value is actually the current value first because reduce is very specific. Like this is how it's used and you can use it with uh, strings too, but because it's so specific, it knows the total is going to be the first value and the current value for the first time it goes through is going to be um, the one with the next one. So our number two. And so another thing with reduce is you can also do reduce right, which just does the same thing, but backwards. So starts at the last item. So we can see that if you want. Yeah, so it starts five, then you add four, then you add three, then you add two, then you add one to it. And so that's reduced, right? And like I said, you can do this with strings too, whatever you want. And if, depending on your needs, you can use the index, you can use the numbers array to reference other things while you iterate through each item as well. So that's a reduced function for underscore. And those collection functions we saw are some of the most used ones for underscore JS. They're not some of the most useful ones. And for this last example, I'm gonna show you a pretty useful one called partial. And this is a function function for uh, underscore. Um, so we're gonna start out with a function called subtract. And it's just gonna take in two arguments and return the first one subtracted from the second one. So pretty simple function. And what partial can do is actually use that function, that original function as a template and have preset parameters. So we'll have a variable called sub five. So it's just gonna use the partial function and pass in that original function subtract and it's gonna set five as the parameter A. And so every time we use sub five, I'll console.log this, every time we use sub five, it's automatically gonna use five as the first parameter for subtract. So if we give it another parameter, like 20, it's going to output 15. So let's see that. There we go. And an another cool thing with the partial is you can actually have a placeholder. So we'll call this one sub from 20. Partial. Um, use the same subtract function. And so for the first parameter, if we want to define it ourselves or have a placeholder, we can just use the underscore. And then the second one we can set as 20. So now every time we use the sub from 20, function, it's gonna have 20 as parameter B every time. And we'll just pass in parameter A as the placeholder. Um, so we'll just say three. And so we should get an output of 17 for that one. And there we go. And so, so even though we only did three examples of functions that we get with the underscore library, there's actually over a hundred. And there's probably some super useful ones depending on your case in your programming projects. So I would recommend taking a look at it and if you really like it a lot, then just start practicing using the underscore functions and it'll make your overall programming experience a lot faster, I believe. And yeah, it's pretty cool.